I'm a researcher doing fundamental research. I'm trying to understand how the brain works and how behavior is controlled and how in psychiatric diseases, uh, what goes wrong in psychiatric diseases and how what we have experienced in our life can make us mentally sick. And I'm trying to understand what is the reason. And once we understand the reason, whether we can correct these uh, alterations in behavior. It's a complicated process and a slow process, which starts from the very beginning. You know, we start by the fusion of a sperm and an oocyte. And these two germ cells carry information, so genetic and epigenetic information from the parents. They fuse, and there you start to be someone at this very early stage. So during embryogenesis, after birth, during childhood, during adolescence and um, adult life and later in life. So you are a combination of what was contained in these germ cells and what you have experienced in your life. The environment that you have lived in, your diet, the social uh, settings, um, your experiences, whether you had a, a very happy childhood or whether you went through a violence in your family, whether physical violence, verbal violence, if you had a, a balanced or normal interactions with people, or if you were a bit weak, humiliated, or not felt accepted by a group of people. Uh, so all these things, also exposure to uh, chemicals, to endocrine disruptors, uh, to smoke, cigarette smoke, to alcohol, you know, if the mother or the father were, were drinking or smoking during pregnancy or during early childhood, all these factors, multiple factors, together with your genes will make who you are, your personality, but also your health, physical health and mental health. What's new is that we try to understand the mechanism which explain how what you are, because of this combination of factors, can be transmitted to the following generations. It is known since a very long time that uh, diet, for instance, the way you feed yourself, or if you people who were exposed to famine during war, for instance, that they may themselves become diabetes, have cardiovascular diseases, or have obesity, but that also affects their children, grandchildren, and sometimes across multiple generations. So it was known that the environment can influence people across generations. What's new is, the mechanism. How can we explain that your personal experience can be transmitted? Because it is transmitted through germ cells, it involves germ cells, so sperm or sites. But what in these cells is altered by diet, by your personal experiences, in a way to be transmitted, this was not known. It is still not fully understood. We have gained, us, our research, uh, my lab and other labs in the world, have gained some understanding, but it's something which is still not completely understood. From a biological perspective, a trauma is any experience lived directly or that you hear about, which modifies your which modifies yourself. Um, so trauma is generally negative. So it's, it's something which will make you scared, maybe depressed, which make, will make you uh, anxious, and uh, it will modify your behavior because you may become then uh, very careful about other people, very careful about situations. Um, and there are trauma like you know, twin babies, when one twin dies, the other twin may suffer. 
it's a trauma. You feel, how can such experience be traumatic for the remaining twin? So the definition of trauma, I think, goes beyond consciousness. It may be something that your body experienced that you may not be aware of, but which still has uh, some impact uh, on you. And from a biological perspective, that's exactly this. Things which happen to you or to your ancestors, which you may not be conscious about, but which are engraved in the germ cells, and which explain why you may at some point uh, feel or you inherit from the consequences of, this, uh, of such trauma. Well, what we found is uh, really to confirm that uh, early experiences, well, experiences in early life are extremely important. And it's uh, not necessarily intuitive in psychiatry, for instance. Now it's more and more that psychiatrists will, or even medical doctors, you know, you have someone with a metabolic problem or diabetes or who, di who is uh, depressed even a, a regular doctor has to question what is the problem. Does it come from the adult life, the, the lifestyle of this person? Or could it come perhaps from the childhood? What has happened to this person before or to his parents or her parents? So I think it's a whole, uh, you know, whole approach, a global approach of, uh, of uh, medicine or, or health. And I think in that sense, we, uh, many things can be done. For uh, psychiatry, for instance, for depressed people, you know, depression is, is a very prominent disease. There are many people who are depressed. And it's still uh, today a kind of taboo. There are many people who are depressed, but who are still active in life, who don't admit that they are depressed and who will not consult. And even if they consult, you know, they will not accept to receive treatment because they think, oh, no, I'm not depressed. No, not me. Um, because it implies that you are not able to manage your life yourself, that you are weak somehow, that uh, you know you cannot cope with life. And it, it's bad because it gives a bad reflection on you. Now, if you consider that it may not have anything to do with your life yourself, but it comes from your ancestors, um, then I think it can change the attitude of people. The attitude of people who are depressed themselves and the attitude of uh, doctors, of psychiatrists consider the person not during the lifetime of this particular individual, but also consider what may have happened before in the previous generations. Or the notion of guilt in terms of uh, for psychiatric diseases can be, I think, improved uh, with this type of, uh, of approach or thinking or reasoning. <laughs>